Hello, my name is Roger Brewer. I'm an uh, enrolled member of the Oglala Lakota Nation from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. I've been coming to the uh, Northern Plains Tribal Arts Show since the beginning, 25 years. Um, I work in the monotype process of, of, uh, of, of making art. Um, I'm also a painter, but I've been doing monotypes primarily for the last 25, 30 years. Northern Plains Tribal Art. It started out. The show started out being known as Nor Northern Plains Tribal Arts, and that's basically what it is. It's now changed. It's it, and then over the years, it kind of evolved into uh, a different kind of a different form. Uh, primarily, the reason I started coming to Northern Plains was <clears throat> because um, first of all, I was invited by friends to come, and. Um, it's about family, it's about uh, tribal relationships. It's, uh, the show is not just about art, but it's also a, a time for the artist and, and the people that come to see the show to, to uh, learn and, and um, help each other. And that's really what it is, it's about family mostly. This is, um, the first, first, few years, few, first few years of the show, I, I found that, um, I, I made a lot of a lot of really good friends. Uh, I remember um, people that some of the people I knew I, I got to see again. This is like once a year time, uh, kind of a once a year gathering. And um, I remember King Kuka and Bobby Penn and uh, some people you don't see there anymore, like Arthur Emiot, who's gotten a little older and it's difficult and the first few years of the show the public would come and it was magical the show was just absolutely magical people would walk around and actually with tears in their eyes because because it was so powerful and people were doing the kind of work that was very very personal pers personally meaningful but um, and I guess probably telling a lot about their tribe and their traditions, their families. Um, and it, it, that, that, but the show kind of lost a little momentum over the years, and, and, but now it's coming back. Because people again are wanting to learn, and, and the artists have changed. It's no longer, it, for a while there it just became, people were doing things that were just primarily about um, about their income and supporting their families, but people have kind of left that uh, left that by the wayside again, and uh, are again doing things that are meaningful. So over the last few years, I've started doing some some collaborative pieces. I've collaborated with Jim Yellowhawk and and uh, even some non-Indian people, Dale Lamphere, and uh, just people, just artists, and we're talking about art and and things that come out of our heart. And, and it, you're seeing a lot, lot more of that happening, not just because it's a trend, but because people, people are wanting to grow. And I think the artists, a lot of the artists that are, that are working today are, are trying to grow. Um, they're trying new, new and different, different mediums. Uh, this, show will never be, this show will never be a Santa Fe because, um, because Santa Fe, it, it, it's it's kind of a a whole different way of, of working and thinking. If somebody in Santa, down around the Santa Fe area, or the Pueblos, or the the Denes, or, or different different tribes down in that area, somebody comes up with an idea, everybody's doing it. Well, here we don't do we don't work like that. Uh, here people. Uh, somebody comes up with a new fresh idea, everybody doesn't jump on the bandwagon. I'd, I'd say that probably, for the most part, artists celebrate newness and, and, and congratulate each other for coming up with a new fresh idea or, or encourage, we encourage each other to, to move on. We've got young guys coming out, uh, Henry Payer and... Um, Keith Braveheart and and some of the, and and uh, Denton Lafferty and some of those guys they're bringing a new freshness to this this whole scene. See when we started when this show started there were no venues for um, uh, tribal arts there were no venues for for Native American art. Uh, 
I know when I started, I started marketing my work in a, a Western art with uh, with uh, uh, cowboy artists. But and but then then this show came along and really and Santa Fe's always kind of been, but this show isn't Santa Fe and it doesn't try to be Santa Fe. It 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 it's it's our own. It's Northern Plains. And we had, and I, I really want to emphasize that it's not, it's not Southwest beautiful blue skies and are, are generally the people, the, even the colors people here use in this country are different. We use very, most people use very earthy, private kinds of colors, uh, the the browns and the dark and the greens and 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 the subject matter is very personal. It's not what everybody else is doing. And I think that's really important to remember that, that it's not like what people perceive Indian art to be. It's Northern Plains, and that's really important to remember. And I wish people would come and experience that with us. The Northern no. Plains Tribal Art Market takes, takes place in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It has for 25 years. There will be uh, a great number of, of up-and-coming artists. There will be some of his old-timers left. Of the, of the original show of 150 artists, there are about five of the original group left. The show takes place September 27th through the 30th, always the third full weekend in September. It's at the Ramcota Convention Center in Sioux Falls. And I would really invite everybody to come and, and uh, experience Northern Plains tribal art at its finest.